Hi, my name is Ben Freer. I'm an immigration lawyer for entrepreneurs. And in this video, I share five 2023 E2 visa trends and updates. Update number one relates to E2 visa availability for Portuguese citizens. As many of you may already know, the E2 visa is only available to citizens of certain countries. This is one of the disadvantages of the visa. If you're a citizen of the UK, Canada, Australia, France, Italy, Spain, Germany, or one of many other countries that have long-standing E2 treaties with the US, then you'll be able to pursue this visa. Unfortunately, if you're an entrepreneur from Brazil, South Africa, India, or another country that does not have the requisite treaty, then you will not be able to pursue this option. While it is absolutely frustrating to see the US economy miss out by not allowing all foreign national entrepreneurs to pursue the E2 visa, it is encouraging to know that E2 visa eligibility is continuously expanding. For example, in 2019, Israel and New Zealand were added to the list. And this year, Portuguese citizens will be able to start applying for the E2 visa. Now, as of 2022, the vast majority of European countries were already covered by an E2 agreement, with the notable exceptions being Portugal and Greece. Now that Portugal will be added to the list, 35 of the 44 countries in Europe will be covered in 2023. The second update relates to E2 visas after obtaining citizenship through investment in a third country. The same act that gave Portuguese citizens the opportunity to pursue E2 visas also took the option away from other deserving entrepreneurs. In the past, if citizens of non-treaty countries wanted an E2 visa, there was a workaround. They could explore the possibility of obtaining citizenship based on investment in a third country that has the E2 treaty with the US. After obtaining the citizenship, they could then use this new citizenship to apply for the E2 visa. The Amigos Act has essentially closed the door on this opportunity. The relevant language of the act states, under this bill, if an alien who has never received an E-visa became the national of an E-visa eligible foreign country by making a financial investment in that foreign country, that alien must have been domiciled in that foreign country for a continuous period of at least three years at any point before applying for an E-visa. So even though it is still an option to use citizenship obtained through investment to apply for the E-2 visa, the requirement of residency will prevent many people from being able to file. Update number three, E-2 visa processing timelines continue to improve. Now that we are moving past COVID, many consular posts have worked through their backlogs that massively grew during the pandemic. For example, the consular posts in the UK and Canada now have reasonable timelines for E-2 investor interviews. And while other posts continue to struggle to catch up, it appears that the timelines are improving and we're getting closer to returning to pre-pandemic wait times. As a result, I anticipate that we will see fewer change of status applications filed through USCIS. Increased incentive to file applications for E-2 visas abroad, as opposed to filing for a change to E-2 status from within the United States, is a good thing since, number one, having an E-2 visa is typically much better than having E-2 status. And number two, reducing the number of applications filed with USCIS will enable them to devote resources to adjudicating other types of applications. The third item on my list relates to business trends that are creating challenges and opportunities for E2 investors. Small businesses in the United States are experiencing a variety of trends that are shaping the landscape for entrepreneurs and business owners across the country. While E2 visa investors will benefit from the relatively strong economy, they will also face unique challenges in the coming year. For example, it's never been easier and cheaper to start and run a business in the US. Technology can massively help small businesses streamline operations and reduce both operating and labor costs. Also, now that remote work is becoming more common, many new businesses will not require hefty investments in office space. While reduced costs to create and run businesses is a positive development, it will create challenges for some E2 visa investors due to the fact that E2 applications based on lower investments tend to receive greater scrutiny. Now, it is absolutely true that there is no specific minimum investment required to obtain an E2 visa. However, over the past decade, many consular posts have been closely scrutinizing investments that are under $150,000. 
The main rationale behind this scrutiny is tied to the notion that businesses that are going to create jobs, which is an E2 requirement, will start with an investment that is over $150,000. This obviously creates a problem in the light of the reduced costs that are required to start a US-based business. If you have an idea for a business with low startup costs that will utilize technology to reduce your need for personnel, you may have a great business idea but a poor likelihood of obtaining an E2 visa. If you are interested in starting a low cost business, you should be careful to plan in such a way that will increase the likelihood of a successful E2 visa application process. In addition to the challenges that low cost businesses present, another area of concern for E2 investors may be the shrinking of the US labor pool. When you apply for the E2 visa, you have to show that your business is not marginal, which essentially means that your business has to create jobs. If you invest in a business that will need US workers, that is great, but it may be difficult for you to find them. And if you can't find workers, that could have a massive negative impact on the profitability of your business. Finally, let's talk about the US economy and the impact that it may have on E2 visa demand. Thankfully, the US economy has been steadily improving since the 2008 financial crisis. Our unemployment rates have dropped significantly and GDP growth has been steady. We've also seen a number of positive developments in areas like renewable energy and technology. Also, while it's too early to know for sure, our government seems to be doing a decent job of tamping down inflation without creating a massive decline in our economic output. This represents an advantage over some other countries. If you're someone in Europe or another part of the world who's concerned about economic issues such as inflation, housing prices, or job opportunities, then you may be interested in seeking opportunities to create wealth by investing in a US business. So there you have it. Those are five 2023 E2 visa trends and updates. If you are interested in pursuing the E2 visa, I highly encourage you to reach out to one of the many talented E2 visa lawyers that you can find across the globe. And if you did enjoy this video, please like it or pass it along to someone who may benefit from it. Thanks for your time.